Kepler-452. The search for life on other planets has recently turned not even into an astronomical trend, but into a fixed idea. At some point, scientists realized that there are a lot of objects similar to the Earth in the universe, so our cozy home has long lost its exclusivity. Gradually, concepts such as exoplanets and super-Earths came into use. The first are celestial bodies located next to the stars and revolving around them, and the second are huge stone balls weighing up to 10 terrestrial ones, but at the same time not reaching the scale of gas giants. Hello. It turns out that life could potentially develop on any of these objects. Theoretically, yes. But if the subject coincides with many important components, at this moment, there are incredibly many candidates for the place of Earth-like planets, but Kepler-452b stands out among them, a strange and very distant world. The yellow dwarf system that sheltered the cosmic body is located 1,402 light-years from the Sun. Why did astronomers pay attention to this object? It turns out that the star around which Kepler-452b revolves is practically the twin of our Sun, and the indicated planet is in the habitable zone of its luminary. On this basis, scientists began to speculate and deepen research as much as possible, and the media even dubbed Kepler-452b Earth-2. Let's turn to the physical characteristics of the object collected by astrophysicists. It's known that the exoplanet belongs to the category of super-Earths. Kepler-452b is 60% larger and five times heavier than our Earth. It's older than our planet by one and a half billion years, so its parent star will leave the main sequence faster than our Sun after three and a half billion years. If we translate that information into an understandable language, this means that Kepler-452b will turn into a scorched desert much earlier than the Earth, because its star will relatively soon become a huge red giant, absorbing the planets circling around it. But since such a scenario will not come to pass very soon by the standards of human life, nothing prevents us from considering Kepler-452b as a likely candidate for habitability and even the possibility of people migrating there. In terms of resettlement, the first thing that can interfere with us is the huge distance to the planet. With today's technical capabilities, it would take so long to fly to the Cygnus constellation that no one will get there alive. For a better understanding, it's worth explaining. At the moment, our probes can reach Pluto in about nine years. If you get to Kepler-452b at the same speed, you'll have to fly out today, even before breakfast, and spend at least 25 million years on the journey. It's clear that this is an unthinkable period, and so far there's no talk of any visit, even by interstellar craft. But astronomers continue to study the super-Earth in the constellation Cygnus and draw primitive maps of its surface. What would we see if we landed on Kepler-452b right now? Firstly, it's believed that this planet has high volcanic activity, and the prevailing relief is rocky. Here, gravity is twice as strong as on Earth, so it wouldn't be easy for a person to adapt to such a significant load. But in time, a generation would be born that feels great in this mysterious world. A year on the planet is similar to ours and is almost 385 days long. If the tidal forces didn't turn the object on one side to the star, that is, if it isn't tidally locked, then it is possible that the change of seasons is observed on it. Temperature is an important moment that determines whether the planet is suitable for us or not. So on the surface of Kepler-452b, it is about 2 degrees Celsius. What about the presence of life on Kepler-452b? It is known that the object receives enough energy from its star to begin photosynthesis, of course, in the presence of vegetation. 
clouding the rosy perspective are two points, insulation twice as large as on Earth and a possible greenhouse effect. If it is present, then most likely there will be Venusian-like conditions, which absolutely excludes both the origin of life and the presence of people on the planet. Consequently, even a probe won't be able to stay in this deadly atmosphere for a long time and withstand the crazy pressure. Like it or not, this remains to be seen. To understand how similar the planet is to the Earth, astrobiologists, planetary scientists, chemists, and astronomers have established a special index. It's applied to planets and moons, and several defining indicators are taken into account. The mass and size of the object, its density, distance to the star, and temperature range. For example, our Moon and Mercury have a rather slim chance of being compared to the Earth, since they have no atmosphere and unimaginable temperature differences are noted. But Kepler-452b is in sixth place on this list. Its presence in the Goldilocks zone suggests that oceans, rivers, and lakes are splashing on the planet. In other words, there's water, the basis of life. True, some astrophysicists suggest that the liquid is steadily evaporating from the surface of Kepler-452b due to the aging of the parent star, which is increasing in size and luminosity. Unfortunately, the incredible distance to the object does not allow us to draw more accurate conclusions at this time. In addition to the index of similarity with the Earth, another parameter has been developed related to the habitability of a celestial body. The bodies of the solar system are also included in this table, where Titan, the largest moon of Saturn, is in first place, with an index of 0.64. The honorary title given to this moon of Saturn is due to the diversity of organic matter and the suspicion of the presence of microbial activity. The Planetary Habitability Index has not yet been determined for Kepler-452b due to a lack of information. PHI takes into account the type of surface, terrain, the amount of stellar energy received, and Kepler-452b is fine with this, as well as the presence of an atmosphere, a magnetic field, and water. Regarding the last three parameters, scientists are in the dark, but close observations continue, and the attention of the scientific community to Earth-2 has not weakened. It is believed that an atmospheric layer is present on the celestial body, but it's not known how suitable it is for the emergence of life. On the table of potentially habitable planets, Kepler-452b is in eighth place. But one should not imagine flying white-bellied whales clinging to purple lianas with their fins or cheerful alien gibbons eating jellyfish-like mushrooms. Everything is probably much more prosaic. I would like to believe that at least bacterial life exists on this planet. Finding traces of it would be a real victory. While the world waits for news from Kepler-452b, you and I will fantasize and imagine what conditions might be on distant Earth-2. Try to mentally transport yourself to this planet and write to us about your assumptions. And, of course, don't forget to put your finger up and click on the bell so we'll understand that this video worked for you and we'll send information about updates on our channel as a priority.